a very interesting article has just been shared on semi-analysis of a leaked document from a Google researcher, and it pertains to free and open source software that could potentially outcompete Google and OpenAI's ChatGPT. So we'll be reading the article and figuring out how FOSS could be taking over the AI data space, and I'll make sure to post a link in the description below. The article is called Google, We Have No Moat and Neither Does OpenAI. Released on May 4th, this is a recently leaked document which was shared by an anonymous individual on a public Discord server, and it originates from a researcher within Google. The document, of course, is only a opinion of a Google employee, not the entire firm, but they make some very interesting points that we're going to go through, and is actually pretty exciting for the world of open source, and will change the competition landscape of Google and Microsoft's approach if things really take place. First off, we have no moat and neither does open AI, what does this mean? Well, a lot of people have been paying attention to OpenAI's new ChatGPT chatbot model, especially Google asking questions like who will cross the next milestone and what the next move will be. But the claim here is that there's an uncomfortable truth. It says we are in position to win this arms race and neither is OpenAI. While they've been squabbling, a third faction has been quietly eating our lunch and they're talking about open source. Plainly put, they are lapping us things we consider major open problems are solved and in people's hands today, just to name a few. We're gonna go into those, but I wanna break down kind of what this is talking about. Recently, Llama from Meta slash Facebook, an AI data model that they were working on, got leaked and now is helping the powers of open source to produce capable language models of AI which are starting to prove to be on par with things like ChatGPT and the likes. So this internal Google memo or doc that got leaked is basically saying, because of this, the barrier of training and experimenting with these AI data models has dropped down to being able to give very effective FOSS or free and open source software that can run on as small of resources as what a normal laptop can run on. Maybe not normal, you might need a better laptop to run these models, but again, it can go into the hands of individuals now, which is very scary for these companies. So a few of those considerations here from the leaked doc, it's pretty wild, but large language models on a phone are being ran. That means you can run, albeit probably slowly, some of these large language models on a Pixel 6 at a five token per second rate. Scalable, personal AI, you can actually fine tune data models or AI on your laptop in an evening. This is absolutely true. I have done this myself and fine tuned a BERT model on some of my specific data all within maybe an hour. And that was on an XPS 15 laptop, which just shows you in perspective how wild the space has really come to be. The next point here is responsible release. This one isn't solved so much as obviated. There are entire websites full of ARP models with no restrictions whatsoever, and the text is not far behind. This here is talking about communities like Hugging Face, which offer an entire database of various different models. You should definitely check this one out if you haven't already. I also have a video about Hugging Face if you want to learn about it, but they basically have models as well as training data already pre-trained and developed. That way you can easily run it on your computer with some basic programming. And don't forget to smash that like button because we're moving on to the next point. Multimodality. The current multimodal science QA question answer soda was trained in an hour, which is absolutely mind blowing because what took weeks or months has been reduced down to mere hours. And the only thing that multimodal really means is the fact that it's a model that's capable of doing multiple things such as natural language processing, or even picking up on images, video sounds, what have you. It just means these models are becoming more and more powerful and taking less and less time to train. So now you can see why the likes of Google and OpenAI may be starting to worry about free and open source software. Because they really can't tap into how fast free and open source is changing AI all over the world as we speak. But there is one way to keep up with this. As it says here, even though the gap is closing, open source models are faster, more customizable, more private, and pound for pound more capable. They are doing things with $100 and 13 billion parameters 
that we struggle to do with 10 million and 540 billion in capital. They're doing these things in weeks and not months, and that has profound implications for Google and OpenAI. And some of the best things about free and open source, this means there are no secrets. There is no restriction when models are free. And also there are no restrictions when you can make multiple well-trained model instead of giant models, which slow things down. So basically what is said here is if you can't beat them, join them. I think the point that's trying to get across here is the fact that if you can't compete against free and open source, figure out how you can allow others to join the race and become a leader or provider for the free and open source AI revolution. And what's mentioned in this doc is prioritizing, enabling third-party integrations, and trying to figure out where companies really add value and how they can support smaller models that are generated potentially from free and open source. This fascinating graph that was included shows how close each of the models currently are in comparison to each other. So Llama with 13B, 13 billion parameters is all that means, Alpaca, 13B, Vicuna, 13B, Bard, and ChatGPT. So for those of you who don't know, Google runs Bard, OpenAI runs ChatGPT, and right now is hosted by Microsoft. And this shows us how far apart the growth was between these various different models and how on par some of this free and open source can be. It's not much further away from ChatGPT. If you consider ChatGPT the gold standard and you consider Vicuna third place, you're only 8% behind. And for those of you that don't know, Vicuna is just another open source AI data model that's supposed to compete against these giant models, which gives you top notch performance. It's flexible, it's adaptable, it's easy to install and use. And if you want a tutorial on it, make sure to subscribe below and hit that notification bell and let me know in the comments section. And then if I see enough interest, I'll go and actually create that tutorial. It's absolutely fascinating to see how far we've gotten in just a few months, and partially thanks to, again, Meta and Facebook, because in the what happened section, at the beginning of March, the open source community got their hands on the first really capable foundational model. As Meta's Llama was leaked to the public, it had no instruction or conversion tuning and no RLHF, which is short for reinforcement learning from human feedback, or as I like to call back training. Nonetheless, the free and open source community immediately understood the significance of what they had been given. There was a tremendous outpouring of innovation that followed. Within days, major developments were made, and now we're here, barely a month later, and there are variants with instruction tuning, quantization, quality improvements, human evals, multimodality, RLHF, and much more. And they're all building this together. The power of free and open source is all too powerful here, I believe, as well as this document mentions. And if you need a powerful tool for a friend who's a YouTuber, make sure to send them to editbulk.com. It's free to use. But most importantly here, as mentioned, they have solved the scaling problem to the extent that anyone can tinker. There is no barrier of entry anymore. People can all train and experiment on their own resources and hardware. Many of the new ideas are from now ordinary people. The barrier to entry and training experimentation has dropped to the total output of major research organization to just one person, an evening and a beefy laptop. This article is absolutely fascinating. Again, I'm going to put a link in the description below. We're not gonna go into it any further because we've really hit that highlights here at this point. I wanna know your opinions. Isn't FOSS amazing? Make sure to thank a FOSS developer when you get a moment. They really help advance us into the future of technology and all for free. Catch me in a great community on Discord and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.